So now we'll move on to the hip exam. And once again, to do this properly, we're going to need to remove the diaper entirely so that we can both look and feel properly. And we have a nice bowel movement here to show that her anus is indeed patent. And so we'll do a quick cleaning of that. And we're in good shape. So first we're going to look at symmetry. And we're going to look at her skin folds, her gluteal skin folds right in here look pretty symmetric. It's not a particularly sensitive or specific sign, but if you saw a significant asymmetry there, you'd be more suspicious about a congenital dysplasia of the hip. So we've examined her skin folds, and now we're going to check her abduction and range of motion of her hips. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and fully abduct her hips as far as we can comfortably and see what kind of range of motion she has. And she abducts pretty much to the table without difficulty or resistance. You want to do that slowly, because if you do it too quickly, they'll resist just because you're doing it quickly. Then we'll fully adduct her hips again and perform our Ortolani maneuver. That consists of, with your fingers on the greater trochanter and your hands controlling both legs, fully abducting, feeling for an acetabulum and head of the femur kind of coming together and clunking or clicking back into joint. So it would be a dislocated hip that you're actually putting back into place by abducting it. And I don't feel any such click or clunk. Then the other thing we're going to do one hip at a time is the Barlow maneuver. And that is we'll do it on her left hip first with my hand in the same position and my middle finger, that's the finger I use, uh, on her greater trochanter. We're going to stress this hip posterior, superiorly, and laterally in an effort to try to bring it in and out of the joint, in and out of the acetabulum, and see if there's any motion there. So I'm moving it, but I'm also stressing it superior, posterior, and laterally, and she's nice and stable on the left. And we'll repeat it on the right side, with the left kind of stabilized now. And again, we're stressing this superiorly, laterally and posteriorly and she's also nice and stable here. And as you can see she didn't enjoy that part of the exam which is why we've saved it towards the last. So I'll re-diaper her now that she's got nice normal hips. to her head. Now once again we've done some observing previously and she has a nice normally shaped head. Again this baby is about 28 hours old. She might have had a little bit more molding of her head from the birth process although she was a c-section baby and they don't have, tend to have much molding. Uh, so she's got a nice round sort of normally shaped looking head. No obvious lesions in terms of scalp wounds or abnormal skin lesions or abnormal hair on her scalp. We're also going to feel her sutures to see if they're either widely split or overriding, but hers feel nice and normal. And we're also going to assess her fontanelles. Anterior fontanelle for her is about a centimeter and a half by a centimeter and a half and is pretty flat. And her posterior fontanelle back here by the occiput is closed. Some infants will have an open posterior fontanelle at this age at birth, but most do not. So her head appears normal. We're going to look at her eyes now. And again, frequently, particularly if you've gotten them a little upset, they're not going to be opening their eyes very comfortably or easily. And so sometimes you need to shade their eyes a little bit so the light's not quite so bright in their eyes, and sometimes that'll stimulate them to open them a little bit which she does nicely. We're looking at the present time for some conjugate gaze, which she mostly has, but they sometimes will have some esotropia or exotropia that is normal at this age, not an uncommon circumstance. You can see she's interested in looking around when the bright light's not shining in her face. Sometimes another way to get them to open their eyes if they're being a little bit less than cooperative is just to tip them up a little bit. But she's not liking it at all, so we're not going to continue to do that. But uh, 
And so what we're looking for in the sclera here is any kind of discoloration like icterus or any hemorrhage or any other kind of redness from inflammation. And so we do have to kind of open this and look at the palpebral conjunctiva as well. And on both sides, things look nice and normal. We're also doing our best to assess her pupil, which as we open each eye does constrict very briskly. And so her pupillary response to light is nice and normal. Another important step for us in the eye exam at this age is to generate a red reflex with the ophthalmoscope. We're looking for a normal red to orange color. And typically we would do this again more in the dark, but uh, because of the cameras here, I think we'll just uh, do our best in the light. And we'll try and shade her 